Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're watching The Legend of Korra. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are watching episodes 11 and 12 of The Legend of Korra season 2. I almost said 3. I think I'm really anxious to get to season 3, um, but I, I'm enjoying season 2. Um, minus a lot of the relationship drama because everything that I seem to be watching lately has so much relationship drama. We don't need it. Take it away. <laughs> but I understand why because teenagers are messy and they do be messy. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to like getting maybe beyond a little bit of the relationship crap, but it has introduced some of my favorite elements in Avatar ever uh, with Avatar 1. My God, knowing the beginning where it all started, how it started, it's just so wonderful. And I, I absolutely loved those two episodes and I treasure them. They're probably my favorite Avatar content to date. Um, and I've had a lot that I've absolutely loved. Now, it was nice to see Uncle Iroh again. Of course, him guiding young Korra through the spirit world, I think, was absolutely delightful. Um, it, it meant a lot, and it was so good to see him again. And and it's really interesting that a lot of my favorite content of Korra doesn't really have Korra in it. And I would like to start really um, liking and enjoying Korra more. Um, I do see her as a moody teenager, and I totally get it. She's been sheltered her whole life, and she's only been able to fight. Like, that's her thing. Like, since she was a kid, she's like, I'm the Avatar! And, like, it's always fighting. It's always fighting. It's always fighting. And I would like for her to maybe, at some point, not always lead with her fists. Um, you know, I think that, like, that should kind of be the last resort. And she, like, really trying to, like bully the president into doing what she wanted and then trying to get Mako to go behind the president's back. It just, there was a lot of things story-wise that I didn't really like about that. And it was incredibly mature, which fits because she is a teenager. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that especially if she's having this, you know, interaction or this, this, I don't want to call him a villain because it's her uncle. It's it's her own like flesh and blood, you know, and and her cousins and and so it's it's hard to want to call him a villain because there's an extra added layer of the fact that that's her uncle. I don't I don't know how I want this season to end. I was going to say like I'm I'm thinking that maybe, you know, he just will get knocked from power and maybe, you know, uh have to go to jail or something. Um, but I don't want him to die or go away necessarily. Like, and, and I would like to really understand why he wants Vatu free. Um, because she, he was very much against the, the angry spirits being, uh, in the, in the seas, like interrupting a lot of trade and all of that. Like the, that there's all these evil spirits that have been attacking all these ships. And to me, I'm like, well, wouldn't, if he releases Vatu, wouldn't that just get worse? Um, so I don't know what his plan is for Vatu. I'd, I'd really like to know because I'm kind of confused by it. I hope there's a good resolution. Um, and especially when the Avatar is involved and there's something that, you know, especially the convergence and spirituality, like, you know, I, I hope that that really awakens something in Korra and that we get to see a whole new part of her. Not a change necessarily, but just growth. You know, it's not necessarily that I don't want her to be a fighter or have that, that grit and that tenacity. That's actually something I really like about her. I just don't want it to always be her first instinct. And I think with that comes growth that she maybe learn patience, maybe learns to be a little bit more reserved. And, you know, I'm very uh, sympathetic to people who need to learn those lessons because there's a lot of lessons it took me a lot of years to figure out. And, you know, I, I still haven't figured it out. And you know, I don't expect her to have it all figured out by the end of the season. And as we know with Aang, like, you know, he saved the world. He beat the Fire Lord. Um, you know, he created Republic City, but he wasn't a perfect father. And that's fantastic to know. You know, he, as, as many big successes as he had, you know, he still had these kids who, like, really wanted to spend time with their father. That does not make him a failure of, as a father. That does not make him um, a bad father. It means that he's imperfect. And that I love because if somebody's perfect, then, you know, what room do they have to grow? And yes, he's dead, so he can't grow. But I, I do feel like there's a lesson for everyone to learn from Aang is that, you know, you're not going to be the perfect parent. I think him and Katara did one hell of a job, 
But, you know, it, it's you have to forgive yourself for uh, some of the things that you lack. And I think that that's the lesson that we could learn from Aang. And forgiveness for our parents, that does not mean if they are toxic, that you invite them back into your life. But you say, you know what, I get it. I see it. And you move on from it. You don't stew in it. You don't live in it. You don't sit there angry about it. Onalak taking Janora is so frustrating, um, but mostly because... She was entrusted to Korra by Tenzin, and Tenzin even says, like, where's my little girl? And, like, that's heartbreaking to hear. And I'm totally expecting Tenzin to go full Papa Bear on this thing. And, like, I want him to be able to con connect with the spiritual world. And I think having his daughter in the spiritual world will help him connect. He needs to, he needs to, he needs to. The fact that he never had was a shock to me because like, you know, he's, he's the head airbender. He's the one that's continuing the line after Aang. He's, you know, restarting a, a whole generation of airbenders, not just with his children, but, you know, air acolytes and whatnot, you know, he's creating a whole new society and he can't connect to the spiritual world. I mean, I would guess that the heaviness of all of that is probably what's been hurting him. Um, and all the places that he would go to try to, you know, uh, really meditate and, and try to put himself in that, that, that world, you know, it's, it's heartbreaking, but uh, not that I think that it's, oh, it's great because Janora is in there, but I feel like that's going to be like the passion that we need to have him connect back to that spiritual world. And maybe Korra being the bridge from the real world to the spiritual world will help him. Oh God, that'd be so great if what he needed was her the whole time. <sighs> that makes me happy. Now, I have not forgot about Mako. <laughs> I was really upset with the writing that we got from uh, episodes, I think it was f five and six, um, because no one was listening to Mako. Everyone's just like, get out of here, kid. What do you know? Like, you, you know nothing. Like, it's just it, like acting like he's just off the streets. Like, he was hired to be a police officer. You know, Lynn saw his potential. Like, you don't just get hired because you're a, a firebender and because you know the Avatar. Like, that doesn't matter to Lynn. So I was really upset about how dismissive she was towards Mako. Um, and I do think he's being framed. Obviously, now I feel like he's being framed by Varric. Varric staging, like, all of these, like, raids and, and taking uh, all of Asami's robots and stuff uh I, i'm or tanks i forget what they are like what the term is but the fact that like he emptied out the warehouse just to get the company like maybe that saves the company i liked him i really liked him and now i'm kind of like i don't trust you and i don't know if i ever will and i think that um he's been compared to like howard hughes and uh elon musk don't trust elon either I'm, no mm -mm. Um, so, uh, moving forward, very cautious with how I feel about Varric. I don't know how much longer we have him in the show, if it's just season two or if he's in for the long haul, but, uh, I do think the doses of, like, his goofiness and silliness is fantastic. Um, it's very limited. It's one-liners. It's, like, a quick scene and then it's done. It's not dragging on, uh, which I think is fantastic. But I feel bad for Asami and I want better for her. And if he can make her company better, great. If that's the help that she needs, then I'm happy for her. But uh, again, I don't trust him. And also with Lynn dismissing Mako, I've been really upset about how they've written Lynn this season. And I think I voiced that as like, like, that's not how she would behave. So definitely I can tell that this was the season that they really messed up a lot of stuff on because of it going to different animators. And I'm sure studio heads got involved and they're like, no, we need to make it to where this happens. And... Uh, that's really apparent in this season. That doesn't make it a bad season, but it de definitely makes it flawed and, and it's disruptive because you can tell the difference in the animation and you can tell the difference in the characterization and things are being drawn out longer than they really should have. You know, I remember Katara fighting with her father in one episode and it was resolved by the end of it. You know, that's, that's the stuff I want is like not this thing that lingers out there for forever and it's constantly in the background. That stuff is annoying. And then, of course, Bolin, our sweet, sweet Bolin, starting his acting career, assaulting an actress. Uh, yeah, I don't know what it is about the characters in this world, but they love to take kisses. They really do. They just go for it. And it's like, maybe you should ask permission. It, it's not that hard to say, may I kiss you? And if the person says no, you go, okay. <laughs> At least I asked. But yeah, going in for it, no. No. Now, it's different when you're a couple. 
it is different when you're a couple because that that consent is given. It can be taken away at any moment, but it has already been given. So <laughs> don't come at me with like, no, it's cute. You can kiss somebody. It's it's like, but I think it's sweeter to ask. It really is. So that's my opinion on Bolin. Um, but also with Eska. <laughs> Look, she's abusive. She's toxic. I don't like it. Uh, that dynamic is not my favorite thing. Um, but like, if she would stop doing that to Bolin, I think maybe I would enjoy her more as a character. I think a lot of people like her just because of Aubrey Plaza. Um, and I want to like her. And actually seeing her choose to help her brother instead of her father while he's trying to attack the, uh, the, the one portal... I think that shows a lot of her character that like she she chooses to love her brother more than help her father with his task. And I don't know if that's going to come back. I don't know if that's going to be something that we see, but that was definitely a change in character that I think I needed from her because I just saw her as someone who was absolutely crazy about Bolin and very possessive. And to me, that's incredibly toxic. And uh, the way that she treats him and, and granted, he doesn't stick up for himself and we never see him try to break up with her. So I don't, I don't quite know how he words things, but I feel like he could have stopped it. It's irritating not seeing that because I'm missing some information there, but I do feel like that would change her character a lot to like see her care about somebody rather than try to possess somebody. That's, that's what I have to say about Eska. I would like more character building from her because she's certainly interesting. I, I don't hate her. I just don't like some of the behavior. And again, I think that that has to do with writing and the way this season was kind of plotted out and what the heads up said about one thing or another. So um, I'm definitely excited to get more character building from her to see what's happening with this harmonic convergence. Finding Janora, my god, Tenzin is going to go full Papa Bear. And if he doesn't, that's okay. But if, if he's able to... Uh, enter into that realm and kick Unalak's ass, I'm all here for it. So guys, let's get into this episode. Super excited to kind of finish up season two and make my way into season three. So let's get into it. Night of a Thousand Stars. Okay. Never get sad with that. Oh, they're going to get off and they're not going to have Janora. No! Her spirit is trapped in the spirit world, but she's going to be all right. Is she? I'm not going to stop until our little girl is back safe with us. I'm told little he was carrying a dead body. That was upsetting. Hey, Mako. Hey. I'm on my way to the big finale for Nuk Tuk, Hero of the South. Hmm? Yeah, everyone's going to be there. Except for you, because you're in jail and stuff. Thank you, Thanks Captain Obvious. Reminder. Yeah. Hey, I brought you something. I thought this would brighten up your new place. <laughs> Read the inscription. <laughs> Dear Mako, Nuk Tuk says keep smiling. Did you come by just to give me a poster? D can you read a room? I came by to give you my sincere, heartfelt words of encouragement. We are brothers, after all, even if one of us is a member of high society and the other one is a criminal. Oh, man. I'm not a criminal. I was set up. Varric knew I had figured out he was hiring gangsters to pose as northern soldiers to get Republic City to join the war. That's why he had me arrested. Yep. Ah, I see what you're doing. You're going for the insanity defense. Smart. No, I'm trying to tell you that Varric isn't what he seems. I am so tired of Bolin being dumb. She saw me. She'll listen to me. I asked her to come, but she said it was too hard for her. You being in jail like this reminds her of her dad. Okay, gotta run, but I'll be back oh, tomorrow. God. And I am gonna get you the best attorney fame and fortune could buy. Bolin, wait. If my theory about Varric is right, something might go down tonight at your premiere. Mm -hmm. Promise me you'll keep your eyes peeled. Yeah, yeah, okay, big brother. I promise. I'm so tired of it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Bolin is dumb as a rock. God, he's... So pretty. <laughs> it's time we take back what is ours. It's time to take back our city. Yeah! Not a fan of war, but I am a fan of Unalak getting his. Sweet. <laughs> oh God, that poster on the front of the building. <laughs> Bolin's dumb as a rock, but he's got himself some hammies. 
City's most famous couple, Bolin and Ginger. They're not a couple. We're Republic City's most famous couple. Bolin, you're a doll, but you're as dumb as the rocks you bend. We are not a couple. Thank you, Ginger. That's not what Shiro said. I think what she says is more important. President Raiko and the First Lady Buttercup Raiko just arrived. Buttercup Raiko? <laughs> extraordinaire, Varric. There they are, my two most honored guests. No expense has been spared. I even had this red carpet imported from the Fire Nation. They make the best red stuff over there. <laughs> I hate that I like him. I don't trust him, but I like him. Mr. President, I took one look at your wife. And I knew that you were a man of exquisite taste. And that's why I know you're gonna love this mover! Varric, I know oh, what I'm you're doing. I'm sure he I won't. I doubt your propaganda is going to change my mind about going to war with the Northern Water Tribe. Yep. Oh, I think you'll be surprised how persuasive I can be. Yeah. It's definitely a propaganda film. It's funny that they're doing it over the pro... Uh, bending thing. <laughs> Poor Naga. <laughs> she definitely looks like a panda bear dog. Thanks to the magic of the movers, our furry friends have found their voices. Oh, good. And you'll be shocked to hear what they have to say. They speak of the injustice that's happening in the Southern Water Tribe right now. My hope is that this epic mover will inspire a real-life hero to rise up and help. Thank you again. Enjoy the show. Well, let's see how this affects the president. I'm just working on a cure for the common cold. Mr. President, there's something more what? important than the sniffles right now. I need your help to stop the evil Unalak. If there is one thing I love doing, it's helping people. The betrayal of this president is right on the money. <laughs> Hook, line, sinker. I think this is your best mover yet. Oh. I just wish Mako was here to see it. Yeah, I don't know if Mako would enjoy it or not. <laughs> I love our job. Oh. You want to do your job? <laughs> Idiots. Why does Lynn employ people like that? Like, I feel like she would be, like, not putting up with that nonsense. Northern Water Tribe Automatons! Automatons. Oh. Beepo Bob. Nut <laughs> Bob. Must destroy. Knock, knock. <laughs> Good job, Naga. Oh! <laughs> I wish, Pabu. I wish. Looks like you forgot that water and automatons don't mix. Can he water bend? Bob, circuits not working. <laughs> we did it! But wait. <laughs> that paw for <laughs> Naga? <laughs> you can't die, Juji. It's okay, Nuktuk. At least I got to be your friend. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> the hands! Oh my god. Is he really upset over Mako? Because he didn't seem to be when he was talking to Mako. It seems like this mover is really getting to you. Everything is going so well for me, but it feels empty without everyone around. Yeah, sorry buddy. Why don't you come back in and finish watching the mover with me? You go ahead. I need another minute. Is he going to see them breaking in? You going to be a real life knock tuck? That's weird. Uh-huh. Look at you using your brain. I'm so excited for him. <gasps> Go save him, Bolin. <laughs> I don't think oh, jeez. So. I don't know why. I thought it'd be more of an Abraham Lincoln situation. <laughs> Good job, Bolin. <laughs> Mr. President, get back. I'm here to help. Look at you being a real life hero. <laughs> sleeves off your jacket. I mean, I, I'm here for that look. I really am. I 
It's so exciting. It's more exciting to watch him do it in real life than in the mover. Nolan, look out! <laughs> Good job, buddy. This is unbelievable. Bolin is bending two full stacks of earth discs at once, which would normally be illegal. But then again, he's fighting three waterbenders, so all rules are out the window. <laughs> Thanks, commentator guy. I'm glad you're at the movie to commentate all of this going on. <gasps> Tell me who sang you. It was Varric. Please don't hurt me, Nuktuk. Oh, well... I think this is our cue to exit. Where do you think you're going? I've never been more excited in my life to see someone get what's due to them. It's a knockout! <laughs> Good job, Bolin. So happy for you. <laughs> scary like dark spirits and Unalak being in control of them. Varric's plan was to kidnap you and blame it on the north. Then Republic City would have no choice but to join the war on the side of the south. Varric really needs you guys to join the war though. And no one saw it coming. Actually someone did. Remember Mako? You've got a great officer on your hands. Mm -hmm. He's one of the best. There we go. There we go. Get rid of the donut eaters. Oh, ask, girl. I can't believe my boyfriend is a real-life hero. My boyfriend? Oh, God. I thought you said we weren't a couple. Of course we're a couple. Bolin, you saved the president. And you proved Mako was right all along. We have to go tell him what happened. Yeah. <laughs> Back um, to the kissing. Oh, you meant right now. <laughs> Avatar Korra, what's wrong? Unalak doesn't just want to take over the South anymore. He wants to destroy the whole world. I mean, he was there for that part of the movie. Sir, we desperately need your help. I'm sorry, Cora, but my answer is still no. <laughs> All the eyes that opened. Sir, Nuktuk needs your help. I know you love helping people. Son, I appreciate you saving my life, but my decision is final. Never should have saved that guy. If you guys need help, I'm here for you. Yeah, me too. Thank you. It's so good to see you guys again. Wait, where's Mako? Jail. How was the big premiere? I saved the president in real life. W what? You were right about Varric. He tried to kidnap Raiko, but it didn't work because of you and because of me. Let's just say we both did good. Yep. Bay Fong says you're free to go. She didn't come and let him out. I feel like she should have. Nice job, Mako. You're going to make a great detective. But I wouldn't chief, want to work there, there anymore. Any detective openings right now. Actually, we have two openings. I agree with that. <laughs> Mako, I missed you so much. Asami, I get it. I get it. So you're not still mad at me? Why would I be mad? Remember when you kicked a desk? We had that fight before you left, remember? Not really. And I lost my memory for a little while. Maybe it hasn't all come back yet. Was it a bad fight? Yeah. Uh... Mm, no. No, it, it wasn't that bad. It was horrible. She went to your job and broke your desk. We need to figure out how to deal with Unalak. I know just the man to talk to. <laughs> Guys, hey! What do you think? That's his jail cell? Oh my god. And I had this cell made special. I'm sure. I had a feeling I'd end up here one day. Julie, <laughs> come on! We got guests! Whip up a pot of that green tea. Tell I him no. Yes, Why are you still Julie, working for him? Prison with you? Yeah. Of course. Don't tell me you guys are still mad about everything that happened. It just happened. I did some good things, too. Who warned you about Unalak? I did. Bolin, who got you into the movers? I did. Asami, who saved your company? I did. Mako, who got you thrown in jail? I did. 
Oh yeah, I guess that was a bad thing. Uh huh. You stole everything from me, there and you, you tried to kidnap the president. Yep. Those are pretty bad too. I wasn't going to hurt him. I just needed to start a war. Just. Where's all the stuff you stole from Asami? It's on my battleship. You have a battleship? A battleship? I bought the first one they made. Named her the Zhu Li. You named your battleship after your assistant? They're both cold, heartless war machines. Look, I am truly sorry for what? the mess I caused. <laughs> Let me make it up to you. Take Julie. My battleship. It's yours. <laughs> Get the men and fall back. What about you? Oh, he's gonna I'm go. going to end this right now. You can't go fight your brother. Please just wait for Korra. I don't want anything to happen to him because I don't need Korra enraged. Looking for me? Jeez. I don't want this face off. I'm too strong for you. You're no brother of mine. You betrayed me. You had me banished. Yes, I did. Oh. Yeah, I'm not surprised. He's mine. You are not the true chief. I am. And you will bow to me. Nice. I know it's hard to make bending look good in live action, but like if they could just even do half of this, that would be amazing. Oh, oh! Smile. Now that I've defeated you, your daughter is next. Okay, at least he's not dead. My God. Harmonic convergence. Okay. I expected that to be the last episode. Thank you, Kaya. Can she feel that in the spirit world? It's definitely a different way of airbending, I think. What are you wearing? What's up with the coat? Yeah. And where did you get that pie? It's a Varric ship. You never know what you're going to find. There's a <laughs> whole a level point. filled with funhouse mirrors. Of course, there's also the cat gator deck. Have you told Cora yet about how you guys broke up and then you kind of started dating Asami while she was off getting attacked by dark spirits? I'm going to keep it down. I'm waiting for the right moment. Uh, it's uh, today, now, this time, you know, this moment. A wise man once told me that delivering bad news to a girlfriend was like ripping off a blood-sucking leech. You just have to do it fast and get it over with. Yep. Ah, I hate it when you listen to me. <laughs> I'm going to close the spirit portals, lock Batu in for another 10,000 years, and make Unalak wish he'd never been born! Oh boy. Yeah, you want to tell her now or later? <laughs> I'd say now. Get it over with. Did do you want something? Uh, no, no, nothing. Really, he should have already said it by now, but... <laughs> we'll blast through the blockade at the main port, crash through the defenses around the portal, and enter the spirit world. Since when does my little brother want to crash or blast through anything? I'll do whatever it takes to save my daughter. Yep. We all want to save Janora, but I think your plan might be a tad over-aggressive. Oh! Seeing as there are only seven of us in one ship. Mm. Really? And what do you suggest? Yeah, ask An Boomy. attack like this calls for strategy. I remember when I was surrounded by pirates. Just get to it, Boomy. Streets. I don't want to hear any of your crazy stories now. This is serious. Tenzin. I just picked up a distress signal from the southern troops. There's a problem. Uh-huh. Uh. Yeah, oh god. I mean her father wouldn't be dead, right? He didn't he didn't kill Tonrock, right? Unalak wiped out the entire southern resistance and captured your father. Captured. Whew. 
What happened? Her soul is trapped in the spirit world. How long has she been away? Almost a week. I've tried to keep her energy flowing, but I can feel her slipping away. <sighs> You're the only one who can help her now, Mom. <sighs> I love that Katara is here. I feel so much, so, so much more soothed by Katara's presence. Unalak's got the southern portal surrounded. Harmonic Convergence is only a few hours away. Then we have to break through the enemy lines ourselves and get to the portal now. We know what our mission is. A suicide mission? Uh, Motley, yeah. You know, I was in a similar situation once. My platoon had crawled through the desert with no water for a week. The only oasis for a hundred miles was surrounded by angry sandbenders. Our only chance to get to the water was to drop in from above. That's a smart so plan. So I fashioned together a catapult, and with the help of a few well-trained monkeys... Enough of your ridiculous lies. Can't you see that the fate of the world and Genora's life depends on what we do here today? Come in from above! That's what he was telling you! Maybe Boomy's right. We don't have a catapult and hog monkeys, but we have a flying bison and there's a plane on Varric's ship. Maybe we can attack from above. What are you thinking? Qu being mean to Boomy. Mako Bolin and I can use the plane to create a distraction. You, Tenzin, Boomy, and Kaya can fly into the spirit portal on Oogie when you see an opening. Let's get moving. <sighs> I get Tenzin, like, he doesn't doesn't like his brother's stories and sometimes I feel like he takes too long to tell the story, but like... He's not, like, an outright liar. Like, it happened, I think. <laughs> There's no proof of that, but I feel like it happened. Now go outside and get the troops ready to defend the spirit portal. From whom? We've already beaten everyone. The Avatar will be here soon. She has no choice. Yeah, those two don't even know what they're actually doing for their father. I love that fierce look on Ugi's face. It's me, Vapa. <laughs> Are you ready? I'm an earthbender strapped to the wing of a plane, so no? Don't worry. There's no there. way they'll be expecting this. Uh totally expecting. I think they were expecting it! <laughs> But what were they gonna do with Bolin? Like, can he earthbend while he's up there? Is he parachuting down? Oh, she looks so cool. Fire! I like the introduction of the planes and Asami being the one that, like, pilots them or even, like, you know, is the driver of the cars. Oh, okay, okay. What did he throw on there? Nice! Using Oliveric's trick. I like it. Let's circle around and see if we can find a way in from the other side. Oh boy. Come on, Oogie. Oh no! Oh no! Get him off of there! Oogie! Spirits are weighing Oogie down! Get off of him, you sticky, nasty little blob of gold. Thank you, Boomy! If I go, you're coming with me! Oh! Oh! Okay, at least they're low enough that he landed in the snow? I mean, he's not a bender, so I worry about him. Nice. I wish Merrick was filming this! We can call it Nuptuck! Sky Warrior! <laughs> I love that he has a creative mind. Dumb as a rock as he may be. Yeah, it's your boyfriend! Whoa. Whoa. The twins are something. Brace yourselves. Oh, God. Y'all okay? You throw some dirt on it and be all right? Oh, God. <laughs> are y'all okay? Throw some dirt on it. Oh, my God. You don't know what you're doing, Unalak. Freeing Vatu won't make you powerful. It will only make you a traitor to everything good that's happened for the last 10,000 years. Yep. You think what Avatar wanted was good? Yes. Driving almost all the spirits from this world? The Avatar hasn't brought balance, only chaos. It's true that when Wan fused with Rava, he tipped the scales in her favor. But this time, I'll be here to level the playing field. When harmonic convergence comes, I will fuse with Vatu. And together we will become the new avatar. Ah. Uh, a dark avatar. He's gonna kill you, dude. That's not a thing. That's not gonna be a thing. Vatu will kill him. Vatu and I will be as one. 
No one will be able to stand against us. Keep them locked up. After the harmonic convergence, I will come for Korra. I don't know. The twins seem to have a moment between them where they're like, uh, we don't like this. I failed in every way. No, you didn't. We've lost Jinora forever. No, you didn't. There's still a no. chance. They didn't get Boomy. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, come on, Tenzin! See? Look at Boomy. <sighs> oh, you want to play some more? <laughs> well, bring it on! <laughs> Oh, 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 uh, I don't think that's working. <laughs> nice wind up. Whoa. Oh. Oh. Okay, well. Sorry, Boomy. I love your spirit, though. Oh, we're playing dirty, huh? Oh, yes, please play dirty. Oh, catch it! Or dodge it. I don't know, maybe give it a hug. I think it needs I need it needs some love. Ooh. Its eyes got wide. It's working! Looks like we've got a music lover here. Oh my god. Is he gonna get all these spirits to like move with his music? All right, soldiers. Looks like it's on us to save the day. Luckily, I've got a plan. Oh my gosh. If Boomy is the key, I will be so happy and do one of these to Tenzin. Eska, Desna, you've got to help us stop Unalak. Once he fuses with Fatu, no one will be safe. Yeah. He won't be your father anymore. He won't be. Our father is the wisest man in the world. If he says what he is doing is right, I believe him. No, you don't. No, you, he, definitely that look said he, that he doesn't He doesn't think his dad is doing what's right. All right. I have a sore throat, so occasionally it gets a little catch. All right, Spirit Army, your general is here. Follow me! Are they all music lovers? It's working. Oh, well, no, they must not be music lovers. <laughs> Find Naga, Naga, outrun them. Behind you, yeah. <laughs> Face in the window. <laughs> My goodness. Get me out of here! <laughs> He's taking the whole camp out. <laughs> Eject. Oh! I didn't expect it to come out the front. I thought he was going to come out the top. Oh! And he took out the twins! All right, guys, rescue time. I mean, did not take him out. Oh, thank you, Naga. <laughs> How did you manage to take out this entire encampment on your own? I did it all with my trusty flute and... Ah, oh, never mind. You wouldn't believe it anyway. Oh. See, Tenzin? You jerk face. Be nice to your brother. Asami, can you take Ugi and my dad back to my mom? This is my fight now. I love you. I love you too, Dad. Yip, yip. I mean, I don't want to saw me anywhere near this, so I kind of like this idea, but... Wait a second! Worst case scenario! So, we're fighting Unalak, you close the portals, and let's just say something happens to you. Are we going to be trapped in there for eternity? Oh, that's a good question. If everything goes as planned, we'll all walk out together after Harmonic Convergence. If not... Let's go. Well, sacrifice has to be made in order to save the world. You have to take that chance. <laughs> but that's, that's intense. All right, Tenzin, whoop his ass. <laughs> Tenzin, go find Genoa. 
Okay, Tenzin, go find Janora. <laughs> Luck is smooth. I'll give him credit for that. Like, oh. now is she trying to close the portal? Good job, boys. You guys are work so well together. You're running out of time, Rama. So was the convergence always going to happen regardless if she opened up the portals? Whoa. Now, do they still have their bending power? Whoa. Okay, that animation was beautiful. Yep, I will be watching the next two episodes shortly. <laughs> but let's recap these first, shall we? Okay, so... <sighs> I'm I'm a little tired of the Bolin is dumb trope. Um, he wasn't really that dumb when we first met him, and it just seems like he's gotten dumber. And I don't know if it really has to do with the fact that, like, he's allowing himself to just play the role of an actor. Uh, I'm not sure, but, you know, him figuring out... The whole thing with the president and i was just like okay 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 yeah 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 yeah, yeah. this is good this is good this is good um there's hope for him yet um and i love when him and mako work together whether they're on the plane or whether they are uh in the spirit world like they're just always better together so i'm happy that they are back together i enjoy that varick actually got arrested and that he's in jail that makes me happy now the fact that julie is still with him is you guys know how I feel about him and Julie. Um, but him actually having a battleship, where was that at the beginning of the season when all this was going down? He could have said he had a battleship then um, instead of, you know, trying to get the, the the president to start a war and to send troops there. He could have said, like, well, I have a battleship. Let's let's go and, like, help them when it was at the beginning, not here at the end when it's for all the marbles. So I'm a little irritated about that. Um, definitely irritated about the I have amnesia and I can't remember breaking up with you thing. Not my favorite thing. It's not even that I want Mako and Asami to be together. I just kind of like don't want the triangle. And it's 100% all Mako's fault. Just tell her that you broke up. Tell her why you broke up. Explain how it went down. And, you know, hopefully she'll see, see that she was in the wrong. And while she can't remember it, like, it happened. Whether she remembers it or not. And other people are there to cooperate that story. Cooperate? Co collaborate. Co hmm. Anyway, I was also frustrated that Lynn was keeping those two guys employed. And I'm so happy that she fired them. Because, like, literally, I was like, they're inept. Like, they can't do their jobs. And, like, they're, they're no Mako. They're not. Um, and I'm, I'm glad that she fired them. And I was like, Mako, don't even take a job. Like, your team avatar. Find ways to make money doing that. <laughs> I mean, being team avatar does not put food on the table. So I, I totally get that he does need a job. But um, I'm happy that Lynn finally sacked them. Because I was just like, why would she put up with that incompetence? Like, why would she put up with, you know, people who behave that way and, and are, are just not good at their own job? Um so what a relief that is. I'm also really glad that we decided that Asami was going to go back with Ugi. Um, and because I, I, I don't, I don't want any of the animals harmed, <laughs> but I also like Asami is probably the one person that I don't know what she could really do while she's there. Um, like, cause there's no machines for her to, to man and to run and, and to fight with. And of course she doesn't have any bending. So being in the spiritual world is really incredibly dangerous for her. Um, I'm happy that, like I said, our boys have their power and they're working back, uh, and forth with each other. But I, I'm, I know it was 10,000 years and I know Unalak, you know, plan on Korra opening the portal, but 
would the harmonic i mean the harmonic convergence would have happened either way it just wouldn't have connected both portals i guess is more because i was just like wait like if this was going to happen anyway but um i guess because Unalak got the domino effect to start that's why uh, but now Vatu has been released and, you know, the twins were, you know, the first people to see kind of it not be a great thing. Like they were shocked by it. And I thought for sure that Desna, when, you know, he was talking to Cora, that he, you know, had a little bit of a look in his eye of, of like, like I'd never betray my father. And I feel like they will be the key to defeating Unalak because he probably takes it for granted that, you know, he has them on his side. Now I was like, Tenzin, whip his ass. But like Tenzin wants to go find Janora. And uh, I totally get that. And, you know, him carrying her off of Ugi to present her to Pema was so like, like it looked like his little girl had died. So uh, I was like, oh my God. You can tell that he's lacking patience when it comes to putting up with Bumi. And then also like he wants to just go save her and go find her. And when his patience is already wearing thin, I think that's like the worst time for Boomy to go into one of his long stories. Now, I don't think that there are lies. Like he had so many crazy things that happened to him in a course of five minutes, you know, like using his flute to like seduce a, a dark spirit. And he tried to do that with the rest. And when that didn't work, he went into the, the automaton and uh it was just like like everything that like went down i was like this is totally one of boomy's stories this stuff happens to him it really does and tends in not having the patience to hear the story i get it he wants to get to janora but at the same time i'm just like you do not have to be mean to boomy if you start telling an airbending story and there's like all these twists and turns everyone believes you because you're an airbender but because you're not a bender you don't believe him that's really frustrating and that really upsets me because i adore boomy uh, I want everything for Boomy, And, you know, I'm worried about him being in the spiritual world, but he seems very sufficient. He seems like he adapts pretty well to whatever's around him and, and, and makes things happen. And if he doesn't, a lot of dumb luck happens to him. Like the fact that he ejected and took out the twins, you know, that Naga and, 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 uh, Pabu, oh my god, that took way longer than I like to admit to to come up with. <laughs> but you know, them showing up and helping him, like like there's just like a lot of luck that happens with Boomy, and you know, if anything, he's a luck bender, and I'll take it, I'll take it. <laughs> now it's really good to see that Republic City is also being affected by this, and that the president. I don't know if the president could have stopped anything, anyways. I don't, I don't know if attacking the Northern Water Tribe at the Southern Water Tribe would have done much of anything because quite frankly, unless you're the Avatar and you can close portals or unless you have Rava in you, then you can't really defeat Vatu. So um, I don't I don't know what the president really could have done in that scenario, but like now at least you can see that it affects everything. Um, and he's ready and prepared, but I don't know how you fight spirits in Republic City. Okay, but I'm not going to um, sit here because there's, there's a lot of things that I think I could complain about and I get why this season isn't everyone's favorite. While there are some great moments and great lines and and a lot of the story, like if you cut a lot of the fat off that you get, like it's it's got a good yummy center. Um, it's just kind of like where I'm like rolling my eyes at the love triangle. And, you know, I'm glad that like, and I, I have said several times that like, um, I don't like the girls fighting with each other and they don't, but there's definitely like this unspoken thing in, be in between them. And that drives me crazy because it's Mako who just needs to like sack up and say what he needs to say. <sighs> there, I said, it. I think I'm being affected by way more of the other stuff that I'm watching on uh, uh, other reactions and other shows because I am up to here with crappy, toxic relationships and uh, people lying. So it's just like, <laughs> just be done with it. But guys, if you want to watch full-length reaction to these episodes, they will be available on my Patreon and up to four episodes early. That is two reactions. But in the meantime, like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. How did you feel about these episodes? Because I get the frustration. I feel it. And especially after the, the four amazing episodes that we had before it, 
I, I, I get the frustration. and But I'll tell you, again, with the fat being cut off of this season, it has a nice juicy middle. And that juicy middle is my favorite. Man, Avatar 1 was just absolutely everything to me. And I'm I'm looking forward to the end of the season, not just because like it'll be over with, but then um, everybody has been raving about season 3 and season 4. So I'm really excited. And, and I know that it's more cohesive because they knew they had two more seasons. So I'm really uh, anxious to get into that and kind of see what all the uh, fuss is about. But guys, come back here for the last two episodes of season 2. And in the meantime, I'll see ya.